Hello, and welcome to a lecture on Open-Ended Rectangular Waveguide. My name is Steve Ellingson. Here's an overview of this lecture. First, I'll remind you that a previous lecture addressed rectangular apertures in a ground screen. And in that previous lecture, we assumed uniform excitation. In other words, we assumed a plane wave backlighting uh, the aperture and that that plane wave was uniform. In other words, it had constant magnitude and constant phase. In this lecture, we're changing the excitation. The excitation now will be provided by an open-ended rectangular waveguide opening into a ground screen. So this problem is very similar, except the aperture excitation is changing from that provided by uniform plane wave to that provided by a uh, rectangular waveguide. Now first I'll confess here that uh, this doesn't have many applications. The real reason we want to do this is that there's a somewhat more useful or somewhat more common application which is that of open-ended rectangular waveguide in free space. Now this um, is useful for two reasons. One is uh, this is actually sometimes uh, used as an antenna. Uh, let me show you an example here. Here's a side view of our reflector antenna. Uh, one occasionally sees these antennas being fed using a waveguide like this. So this is a waveguide. You can imagine uh, the uh, wave being applied to the waveguide, traveling down the waveguide, and then radiating out the open end. In this case, the open-ended waveguide is being used as the dish feed. Now another reason for considering this case is because you can view this problem as the crudest possible horn antenna. Now I think uh, most of you realize that a horn antenna kind of looks something like this, or this is at least one example of a horn antenna, where you have maybe some waveguide feed and it uh, connects to an, a flared uh, structure like this, and then there's radiation from this larger opening here. So that's a, a horn antenna. Uh, you can think of this problem as the crudest possible horn antenna. In other words, it's one where you just have that waveguide and no flare, right? Or alternatively, you can think of as a horn uh, whose flare angle, this angle here, is zero. So we're starting to apply aperture theory to antennas that are uh, possibly encountered in practice. Okay, so here's the first problem. Open-ended waveguide with a ground screen. So here I'm showing uh, a rectangular waveguide. It is bearing a TE01 mode. This is the lowest order mode that such a waveguide would carry. I'll say what it is uh, mathematically in a moment. And it's opening up into a ground screen. So this ground screen lies in the uh, XY plane. The opening dimensions are LX by LY as indicated here. And here is a mathematical expression for that TE01 mode. Uh, we're assuming the electric field is Y hat polarized, uh, magnitude and phase E naught. And then we have this cosine dependence, which uh, the argument is pi X over LX. So if you think about this for a second, what this does is it gives you a non-uniform magnitude uh, that kind of looks like this. It goes to zero at either end and is maximum in the center. In the Y dimension, it's just uniform. So uh, as you go from one end of the aperture to the other end of the aperture this way, the magnitude's uniform. As you go left to right here, it goes from zero to a maximum to a minimum. And this is the TE01 mode. Now, just pause for a minute and note that we have an approximation embedded here, and that's this good old approximation two in the box uh, that I mentioned in previous lecture. That is, what we're assuming is that the field in the aperture here that we should be concerned about is the one that is determined completely by the instant TE01 mode. And the reason this is an approximation is because we know what happens in practice is in fact, we get some scattering from the edges of this aperture, and that modifies the aperture field a bit. But what we're going to do here is show uh, that that really doesn't make that much of a difference here, as long as the aperture is relatively large. And we'll say more about what relatively large means uh, towards the end of the lecture. 
Okay, so here's the uh, expression that we can use. We derived this in a previous lecture. Uh, this is from what I was calling previously type 2F equivalence, uh, which is the appropriate form to apply when you have an opening in a ground screen. Um, and this should all be uh, old news. Also, uh, note that um, it's exact same form as uh, the earlier problem, problem we solved in a previous lecture. Uh, the only thing that changes here is the uh, aperture fields, which changes these uh, factors px and py, which you hopefully recall are uh, spatial Fourier transforms of the field in the aperture. Okay, so now we can jump directly to the solution because we've already done one of these problems in detail in a previous lecture. Now we can simply jump from the starting point to the ending point here. But you should make sure that you can do this on your own. Again, we've done this in a previous lecture for a slightly different problem. Uh, but um, you, know, you should make sure that you can repeat my results uh, as we go along. So what we find here is that for the open-ended waveguide in the ground screen, the normalized patterns look like this. Uh, we can identify an E-plane pattern, which is that in which uh, phi is pi over 2, or u is 0, equivalently. Uh, in the H-plane, phi is 0, or v is 0, equivalently. In the E-plane, the normalized pattern is this thing. And this is uh, the same result that we got for an aperture and a ground screen problem with uniform excitation. Right? So what we're finding here is we change the excitation and we're seeing the same result for the E-plane pattern. Now you can anticipate this because the variation of this new aperture field in the Y direction is the same as it was in the previous problem. So it's not so surprising that we get the same E-plane pattern. What changes is the H-plane pattern. This is different. It's different, you can see right away, we have this new denominator here, which is somewhat more complicated looking. And I'll just also remind you here that we have this thing, which I've referred to previously as an obliquity factor, which forces the field to zero, or forces the pattern to zero along the ground screen, right? In other words, at theta equals pi over two, uh, corresponding to grazing incidence on the ground screen, this goes to zero, and that's required to satisfy electromagnetic boundary conditions. Okay, now let's do the problem without ground screen. So this is the one that's applicable to some dish feeds. You can also think of this as being the crude uh, zero flare angle horn uh, problem. So in this case, it's exactly the same as the previous case, except there's no ground screen. All right, so everything is the same. We just took away the ground screen, so the waveguide is just opening up into free space. We have the same aperture field, so nothing has changed there. However, the way we uh, compute the fields in this problem is a little bit different because, again, as we noted uh, earlier in the lecture on aperture theory, that the appropriate form of uh, equivalence to apply here is type one. And you recognize now, or you should be starting to notice that the difference between those different forms, type 2F and type 1, as they apply to this problem, uh, manifest uh, in a, several different ways. But one way is this obliquity factor here. So this is something you should uh, keep an eye on. OK, so again, uh, I won't show you the intermediate steps because those are now fairly tedious. I mean, you should know how to do them. Uh, but I don't want to work through all the details in every step. I'll just jump to the end here, which is the normalized patterns that we're interested in. So in the E-plane, we get a different result. It is uh, this result. You see it is, in fact, quite similar in that we have the sink form here, and then the obliquity factor is different. Previously, that was 1. In the problem with the open-ended waveguide opening into a ground screen, this factor here, the obliquity factor, is 1. Now we see it's 1 plus cosine theta divided by 2. Okay, here's the H-plane pattern. Again, very similar to what we had when we had a ground screen, but the obliquity factor has changed. That was previously cosine theta. Now it's 1 plus cosine theta over 2. In fact, we have the same obliquity factor 
in the E and the H planes, whereas previously we had different obliquity factors. The big difference here is that the H plane pattern is no longer being forced to zero along the ground screen. Why? Because there is no ground screen. Right? So it makes sense that it doesn't necessarily have to code to zero. And in fact, you can see that at theta equals pi over two, uh, this obliquity factor goes to one half. So instead of going to zero uh, in that plane of the aperture, it now goes to one half in the plane of the aperture. Okay, let me show you an example uh, that corresponds to some physical waveguide uh, that you may encounter. Uh, the thing I'd like to consider here is WR90 waveguide, and I'm going to look at it at a particular frequency, 9.32 gigahertz. By the way, this is directly from the textbook, uh, but I'm just uh, presenting it again here because I think it's a, a very useful thing to look at. At 9.32 gigahertz, uh, it turns out that the dimensions of this waveguide, the cross-sectional dimensions, are 0.71 lambda by 0.32 lambda. So those are our LX and LY. Uh, note that these are not very electrically large. In other words, these dimensions are small, uh, or at least smaller relative to a wavelength. Uh, they are not many wavelengths across. So uh, you would be right in seeing that we are challenging here this notion that uh, the aperture has to be electrically large for our assumptions to apply. Here is the finding. And again, this is from your textbook. This is the E-plane pattern. And I'm showing you three things here. First, this solid curve here that I'm tracing over is with no ground screen. And uh, that's the theoretical result we just derived. The dots shown here are from a measurement. So this waveguide has been put into a chamber and measured. And what you find is the result in the E-plane is very, very close. Here's this factor of one half I talked about in the previous slide. And both the theoretical result and the measurement uh, suggest the same result, right? The thing that's different, of course, is back here. This is directions behind the opening of the waveguide. And it makes sense that they would be different there because uh, everything about our assumptions ignored or abused the notion of what should happen back there. So in fact, in a future lecture, we will address ways to improve uh, our modeling back here. Right now, it's not so good in this half space because of our assumptions. Obviously, we're gonna have to do something to account for scattering from the aperture edge in order to do better. Uh, finally, let me point out these, uh, uh, this curve here, the dashed curve. That's with a ground plane, and that's a theoretical result. And uh, you see what's, uh, what's happening here. The E-plane uh, pattern uh, is able to be much wider uh, with the presence of a ground screen. But as I mentioned when I first started talking about this slide, this opening is electrically relatively small, um, just a little bit smaller than a wavelength in each dimension. And yet we're getting very, very similar results. We don't have measurements for the uh, with ground plane result. We do have measurements for the without ground plane result. Uh, and we see that those agree. And that's pretty remarkable. So it turns out we can abuse these uh, assumptions uh, uh, by quite a bit and still get reasonable results. Now, you should always be careful, right? I'm not saying that this is always true. And I'm not saying that this always yields acceptable uh, accuracy. Uh, I'm simply pointing out that you can get remarkably good answers even with uh, these relatively severe assumptions, uh, and that can be useful. This concludes this lecture on open-ended rectangular waveguide.